once again a disembodied voice. We're talking about Father's Day. Father's Day is an episode that I haven't watched in a little while. Like a lot of series one I haven't gone back to for a long time. And so this is an episode where, again, I'm really reevaluating it. For a long time, it was an episode that I just kind of took for granted as it's one of the greats without really giving it too much thought. And now I think it is still a really good episode, but the more I think about it, the more problems I have. We'll get to the Rose in a minute, of course, and Rose has always been a problem with me in this episode, among many others. But here I feel it's kind of weird where it's like, I enjoy the episode slightly less than I used to, but I dislike her slightly less than I used to also. So my enjoyment of Rose as a character and my enjoyment of the episode as a whole is sort of inversely proportional. Like, I don't know, in terms of general thoughts, it's really hard to describe how I felt, I guess, watching this episode this time around. I appreciate it for what it is and how, like, unique it is. How unique this premise is relative to other Doctor Who episodes. Because, yeah, like, time paradox stuff, we do that all the time. But where so much of it is just sitting with the problem and sort of just letting this family drama play out. It's not something we get often with this show. It seems like all the drama holds up in this episode. The little, like, time stuff doesn't. It's morbid, I suppose is the word I want to use. It's really morbid and morose and gray and sort of depressive. And that is a tone that we will get away from really, really heavily, starting almost immediately with next series. I don't think any episode of this show, at least just in terms of aesthetic... And in terms of just the tone for the whole 45 minutes, has ever gotten this gray and dark and broody again? They're basically just waiting for the Reapers to destroy the universe. But even then, it's like, you take the Reapers out of it, and we've got Pete, who's this sort of going-nowhere guy. His relationship with Jackie is super strained. You've got this marriage that they're attending where the guy's dad is not for it. Mm -hmm. And the whole episode is filmed really gray. I thought maybe it was just me years ago, but now I know for sure that they definitely purposefully muted all of the color in this episode. The music especially, we haven't talked at all in any of these about Murray Gold's score yet, and it really sticks out in this episode because no other episode's music sounds like this ever. And I guess a lot of why this episode sticks in people's heads so much is just how much of it is not like other episodes of this show. It's just, like you said, it's pretty morbid, basically waiting for everyone just to more or less die, because <laughs> even if they do escape, the Reapers are eventually going to take out everybody in the universe, right? It's kind of vague. The Doctor says they're going to eat everything in sight until they quarterize the time wound. So they're probably not going to go as far as the universe. I suppose it works that it's vague, but just so that we knew entirely what the stakes were, because the impression I get is that maybe they stop after they've eaten everyone in the church, or just everyone in this small neighborhood. Maybe, but they just seem to be attacking, like, I think it was Mickey's parents. They didn't have nothing to do with it, and they still ate. Yeah, but they are in the neighborhood, right? Yeah, they're like, in the neighborhood. We haven't quite gotten to establishing, like, fixed and loose points in time yet, have we? Unless I'm forgetting an episode. I think they might have established it. I can't remember. Because if we haven't, then what I'm getting from this is that, like, we haven't fully established the rules yet in regards to what constitutes a big enough change in a timeline. For the context of this episode, is just because Pete is alive now, the only way to fix that is to get rid of everything in the immediate vicinity. So, like, no one's gonna die off in Peru or New York or something because this dude in England is back alive. But everyone who, like, knows him or lives in a in this same place as him has to go. I don't know, that's something that could have used some explanation. Yeah, it's just kind of vague, but that is, that's a good theory. Plus, I mean, we don't want to give it too much thought because we're already a decade plus out from this episode and we know that these Reapers will never be a thing again. I'm kind of glad about that. I don't like the concept of the Reapers. I think it would have been better to just have the whole universe slowly falling apart, kind of like we see in the finale for the 
this season? It's interesting, especially with the way that you've been advertising series one of the show for people is that it's an action show. And so you want there to be some kind of tangible monster to face. That's not how I would have done it given this premise, but I understand where they're coming from. Like, okay, at least one monster in every episode. Because otherwise it's just people sitting around in a church. And plus, I suppose we need there to be a reason why the church is safe. Because just structurally, you don't want the whole episode to be, we have no clue what or who is going to vanish next. There has to be something like, if we stay away from this thing, we'll be fine. And there are other ways to do that. Yeah, making it a big dumb monster that's going to eat everyone, it's, it's simple. I suppose this is a good example of what I like that this show's continuity is loose enough that we never have to mention these things again, or they never came up before. Where it's like, this is very much a show where you have to pick and choose what you consider canon. Even once you've chosen that, you have to decide how much it matters for the sake of making a single episode work. I think most of it, though, was his first season working out the kink. There's never going to be a moment where we have a steady, completely solid continuity for Doctor Who. Since day one, it's basically going to be whatever the rules are, whatever has happened in history, however time and space works, is what the writer of this episode decides it is, and you just have to roll with it. What matters is the episode as you're watching. I still think it's just a bit suspicious that we never, ever talk about or see or mention that the Reapers ever again. I wouldn't call it suspicious. I just call it they realized how unwieldy of a way to handle paradoxes that is. Yeah. So do you want to get into the Rose discussion? We might as well. Like, I've always hated Rose in this episode, and I hate her slightly less now. It doesn't seem to me like she premeditated having saving her dad, and the doctor accuses her of that, and she's like, no, it's not like it was some big plan, and I believe her when she says that. Like, and I sort of get it. Her father, who was not alive for most of her life, is now suddenly alive again. There's a lot of stuff going through her head emotionally. But when she gets to lines like, you're just jealous because you're not the most important man in my life anymore, what are you talking about? <laughs> I don't want to sound mean, because I think a lot of my problem with Rose is Billy Piper, and just some of the facial expressions that she pulls. Like, Rose's dialogue, just on the page, I don't think I would hate this character nearly as much as I do if she was playing it differently. But there's something about some of the faces that she pulls, not just in this episode, but in other ones where I'm like, I read a lot into her facial expressions and they make her seem more unlikable. It's like she plays it like a bitch on purpose. <laughs> yeah, like I was trying to avoid being that mean about it, but that's exactly the word that I get from a lot of her facial acting. And I don't know if it's Billy Piper like informing the character because she thinks she's supposed to come off that way or if that's in the script, or if that's just how Billy Piper's face looks. Because depending on which of those that is, all of my problems with this character might falsely enhanced, I guess, by this performance that I'm just reading wrong, or that just isn't coming out right. I, I hate to quote Mr. Tardis, but he was talking about the finale, and how there was a scene where she's looking at the girl, I forget her name, like, but there's actually nothing in the script that tells her to act that way. Like, even as I'm acknowledging that that might not be on purpose, that's still how I have to read the scene, because that's just how that face looks to me. I don't think this is a, unintentional. She's either, this is how she thinks the character is supposed to act and behave, or this is the direction she's getting. And, like, this is fine as a starting off point. Like, this is fine as, oh, she needs to learn to be more mature. But as we'll see once we get into Series 2 eventually... She, does, she gets less mature with time. It's been so long since I've watched series one and two all the way through in order. I'm really interested to see if my thoughts on her relationship with Ten change based on like how I've read the Doctor and Clara. Because a lot of people hate Clara, almost as many as like hate Rose, maybe even more so. But I have a very specific read on their relationship that makes all of Claire's terrible moments okay, and I wonder if I'm meant to have a similar read on Rose at any point, I guess. 
I don't think so. And we get another reference to uh, her, like, the fact that she and Mickey are broken up, I guess, but not really. Like, I forget what it is exactly she says, and it really sucks that Edward isn't here because he can't remember the line verbatim off the top of his head for me. When Pete is like, do you have anyone, like a boyfriend or something? And she's like, I had... Or, I don't know, she she says something to imply that her relationship with Mickey was past tense. I feel like the writers know something that we don't. Like, the writers are assuming that it's being conveyed that she and Mickey, yes, did in fact break up at some point. I feel like the writers think that's clearly, oh, they've broken up. But really, we don't know that for sure. So now whenever she's, like, dismissive of him or refers to their relationship as being over, it just seems like she's being really vindictive. She <laughs> the victim the whole series you said you can like her less in the second half or the second season uh yeah once we get to series two i like her a lot less that's weird because i like her more starting after the cyberman two parter but i'll get to that later but i don't want to distract too much from this episode and jump ahead a whole season but my main problem with her in that one is that turn up the jealous romance angle way too much and like it's an episode by episode thing like What I'm discovering about Rose through doing these podcasts is that how much I like or dislike her changes a lot from episode to episode. It's not just a net completely Rose is awful in every episode. It's very much a case-by-case thing. I don't like how every time there's anybody that's slightly good-looking, she kind of throws herself at them and pretends that Mickey's not even there. And speaking of Mickey, I was surprised he wasn't in this episode as much as I remember him being. Like, I remember child Mickey having, like, a part in this episode. He really doesn't. He's there for two scenes, and they're really, really short scenes. Uh, well, I guess if we want to get into the meat of it, we can talk about Pete. I spent a lot of the episode wondering, like, what it is we were trying to say, and it's only when it was over that I really that it sort of clicked for me, where, like, the theme of the episode surrounding Pete, or I don't even know if it's, like, a tangible theme, so much as it is just a really interesting exploration. Of- and the role Jackie plays in it is sort of weird, but we can assume that she tells Rose about this, like, idealized version of Pete, even though clearly in life she did not have much respect for him. Because she feels guilty about that, she decides to tell Rose a much better version. Rose shows up and it goes back and forth with like whether or not she's disillusioned. She tries to paint this portrait for Pete of how great of a dad he was, mainly so that he doesn't realize he died. But he's like, no, that's not me. I would not be that great dad. Both Pete and Jackie are sort of assuming in the past that even if Pete did live, he would not be that great of a father. And Rose just refuses to accept that. The fact that Jackie didn't respect him, I think, is compounded by the fact that he died in an accident. Like, nobody knows the circumstances, he just sort of got hit doing, I don't know, random normal people stuff. With that being the case, all we have to go on for how good of a dad he'd be is his past behavior before the accident. But then that changes when at the end he, he makes a conscious sacrifice... And because of that action, we can tell, oh, he probably would be a really good dad, better than he gives himself credit for, definitely better than Jackie gives him credit for, if he stayed alive because of that sacrifice. I'm not sure immature is the word I'd use for him. He messes up Jackie's name when they're getting married. He might have been cheating. Oh, that's also true. But I don't know if that's generally like a he's too immature thing so much as it is he just does not have any of his life together thing. Like you could you could argue that those are the same thing, but I think there's some distinctions to be made. Always trying to come up with some kind of new con or whatever you want to call it, like you know, selling bars. Like he doesn't view it as a con. Like he's one of those guys who thinks he's brilliant or that he has brilliant ideas and then when you really step back and look at them, they're just like, no, dude, that's silly. The point I'm generally trying to make, it's left up to the audience to wonder whether he really would have been a good dad until he decides to kill himself, and that confirms it for us that he would. Like, the interesting sort of philosophical question, I guess, is let's pretend that something happens, he survives his car accident, but Rose and the doctor never show up. And let's pretend that some sort of danger, maybe it's the Reapers, maybe it isn't, shows up again. And he realizes that he has to die to stop it. Would he make that sacrifice without older Rose to interact with? Or does his interaction with her, like, 
affect him to the point that he's willing to make that sacrifice. I never thought about that before. I think he would because I think he does care about Jackie and Little Rose enough to maybe sacrifice his life for them. Yeah, I think so too, but I just like that we can't entirely be sure. Like, it's a neat little time travel thing. We could argue that it's because of Rose that her father makes this really heroic decision and justifies the fact that young Rose will then grow up with a really heroic ideal of her father. How do you feel about Jackie just on her own, I guess? Uh, in this episode? Or overall? I mean, I know overall I'm like one of the few people who actually likes her. Although I suppose that has more to do with series two. The more I'm thinking about it, most of why I like Jackie comes from after this series. I suppose maybe starting with uh, Bad Wolf. There's not really much to like about her in these early appearances. She has some funny lines, but especially in this episode, she's just so unpleasant. Yes. (laughs) Because this is a weird thing about just storytelling i guess when you decide to set your story and how much you decide to tell us in flashbacks or not will do a lot because we know that she assumes that pete is cheating and i guess that we as the audience are meant to extrapolate from that pete has a history of cheating that's really bad and gives her grounds to like attack him like that but because we're seeing things as rose sees them And for the most part, as we see Pete, he doesn't really do anything wrong. It really paints Jackie as the unsympathetic one, right? Like, had we gotten to see their relationship prior to the events of this episode, we should be able to sympathize with Jackie way more than we do, because a wife that gets cheated on with, we're assuming, some regularity, yeah, she's entitled to get really angry and really snippy. But because we never saw that happen, the way it feels, at least, is that Jackie is just being unreasonable. I I get what you're saying, but we also have to take in consideration that Jackie might be accusing him of something that he's never done. We don't know for sure. Maybe Jackie accusing him of cheating is just a part of their relationship. She only brings up one specific example, and Pete, like, has an explanation or an excuse for it. And we can't be sure which of them is lying and which of them is telling the truth. I suppose I'm just sort of curious as to how are we supposed to feel about Jackie? Because I know we're supposed to sympathize with Pete for the most part because we're supposed to feel sad when he dies. But up until the moment where he chooses to make the sacrifice and then the audience is supposed to go, Oh yeah, he really is a really good guy. How much are we supposed to be like, is Pete a bad husband or is Jackie a bad wife? Or is it both? That that's vague on purpose and that we're supposed to think about it because relationships are complicated? I think that he was probably not the best just by going by all the little schemes and stuff that he was doing when they first first found him. He's not ideal husband material, I don't think. Yeah, he's just kind of like Xander from Buffy. Uh, Yeah. The point is we can't be too sure how much of Jackie being this awful is warranted. And when that happens, my natural question is, do the writers know that she's being that awful? And is there just something that's not being conveyed from page to screen? I think it's just a personality trait with her before and after. Yeah, that she's just really accusative. Yeah, she keeps making, she jumps to conclusions and just... Yeah, so I guess maybe I'm thinking about it too much and it's just supposed (laughs) to be that Jackie has problems trusting people, specifically men, I guess. I don't think you think about it too much. When they show that Pete is not the greatest dad in the world, I mean, they are trying to show you he isn't that amazing. When Rose is like, you shouldn't be fighting like this, you love each other. Like, the whole episode is Rose having to tackle the idea that maybe her dad wasn't that great. And then with that scene, it becomes maybe their marriage in general wasn't that great. And it sort of gets a little bit muddy because we're wondering if the point of the episode is Pete might not have been that great a guy, but then the way that scene paints it is so much Jackie not being a great person. We have to wonder. It, 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 it muddles things up a little bit. Part of it is just Jackie being unpleasant so much throughout the series. Yeah, like I get that it's it's neat that we're thinking enough about Jackie's character that we're making that a consistent character trait. But at the same time, you, you kind of have to question, like, was it worth making her seem this bad if it sort of muddies the waters too much on... Well, maybe those waters are meant to be muddied. I just, I feel like I have to know a little bit more about what the intent is. 
And it ties into my earlier question, I guess, of how much of his sacrifice is older Rose's influence putting his past actions into perspective? Or would he always do that? Because there's just not enough to go on as it is. Maybe we go back to this and show them getting together. Oh. Yeah, because Rose and the Doctor don't have to like go in the TARDIS and visit them throughout their whole relationship. But just for the benefit of the audience, I think it would be a good thing that we get to see how Pete and Jackie met, what it is that they fell in love with about each other, how did that maybe get corroded with time, and how much of it is whose fault. These two just seem to hate each other. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, I know relationships that get like that, like yeah. not personally, but you hear all the time, people who are married and clearly have been married for so long that the infatuation has worn off. They know the best and worst things about each other, and the worst is all that they can see at that point. And it's like, yeah, I wish I knew what the episode was trying to say about Pete with these things. Is he a cheater or isn't he? How much of it is just Jackie being unreasonable, and how much of it is, oh, this is also something the audience is supposed to, like, seriously consider about this man? Because Rose has an inflated view of what he's liked, and a relationship for that matter. This hmm. to show us it wasn't that good of a relationship, and her dad wasn't that great. <laughs> we should also talk about the Doctor. Like, I'm not sure how much I have to say about him in this episode, because, like, so much of what's interesting about this episode is Pete and Rose, and the Doctor's really separate and away from that for most of the episode. The episode is mostly about Pete and Rose, so the Doctor's just kind of long for the ride, almost. Yeah, I mean, like, he leaves them to their own devices. Uh, there's that great scene where he finds the TARDIS and it's empty. I never really thought too hard about it, like, oh, he's just opening the TARDIS, but this feeling, I'm like, is he seriously considering leaving Rose? Because she's already screwed up the timeline like what's leaving her there gonna do that could be worse and it's only when he opens the TARDIS and realizes that it's not there anymore that he realizes how serious it is I kind of have to wonder if as he's opening it is he thinking like I'll just leave her here she was clearly she's just as bad as Adam she just came along so that she could save her dad and like use the TARDIS for selfish ends yeah they don't really make up until later so that's sort of at the back of my head I don't think he's gonna leave her personally. I mean, he seems to have a, a view of her that she's like, you know, the golden child still. Even though she does screw up here, I think he's just temporarily pissed off because mm -hmm. later on it just seems like, oh, I was mad, but I'm over it. It's especially true because um, you brought up Mr. Tardis earlier, and in his review of this episode, goes to that look the doctor gives Rose at the very end after a Pete's dead, and he sees that as like a cross me like this again and I will end you look. And that's not how I read that look. I don't think he would ever leave her behind. He seems to love her too much. Yeah, I don't know. And that's something that I think maybe I brought up during the Rose podcast, or at least I hope I did. It applied to that episode specifically, but as I'm watching this, it also applies to the season as a whole, I guess, which is, I'm not entirely sure I'd buy that they're as close as they are. Like, I know that doctor-companion relationships usually get really close really fast, but I don't know. I don't think it's my dislike of Rose this time. I think it's just something about the way that their relationship is paced. I don't get the sense of, like... Falling in love. Falling in love or even just best friends. I feel like he sees her as, like, a caretaker would like he's a father figure for her and that's why like he's contrasted with pete a bit and she's like oh you're just jealous when we're at the very beginning of this episode and she's like i want you to take me to see my dad and he like doesn't even bat an eye at it and he's like your wish is my command, like, that's there so that when he does snap at her, it's like, oh, because he puts so much trust in her judgment and never assumed that she was going to do something this stupid. I don't know that he's at that point where he should trust her that much yet. This is just my theory, is just infatuating with her because, you know, he loves her and stuff and he's not thinking clearly. And maybe right. a lot of this is just how much I don't buy that they are where they are in rows. In that episode, they, he goes from being really dismissive of her for like 50% of that episode, and she goes from being really distrusting of him to without any real 
build up or shift a couple of scenes later they're running around like town holding hands and smiling at each other and stuff their relationship is built on the episode rose and that episode needed to really sell me on them like falling head over heels for each other not in a romantic way necessarily but like you can fall for someone platonically but i don't get that from either of them in that episode. And it doesn't help that the very next episode, the end of the world episode, she starts questioning everything and freaking out and said, I ran away with this man and I don't know anything about him. I don't trust him. And then they just leave it. I mean, we didn't talk about that episode and the way that episode ends, you think it's going to go somewhere with that? You sort of don't really. Like, we spend the first two episodes on and off building this sort of chemistry, sort of distrust between them. And then by the time we're here, I don't feel like enough time has passed where it's like, oh, yeah, of course it's a serious betrayal for the Doctor that she would do this. Or, yeah, of course, like, Rose values the Doctor's approval so much that she would get teary-eyed because she made a mistake. I don't know. So do you think this episode will work better, like, a second season? I think like, that aspect of it would. I remember someone telling me, I think it was Edward, that he wanted to see it, like, in, like, third episode. Yeah, either put it later or put it earlier. Once you get to the moment where the Doctor is like, uh, I asked you if you wanted to come with me in my space machine. You said no. And then I said time machine. And you said yes. Where it's like he's assuming that she's just came along with him for the chance to do this. And that accusation holds a little bit more weight if this is earlier into their relationship. And this could be, you could use this episode as he realizes just how much this meant to her. And that helps him sympathize because he does bring up the time more and his family like he lost them and of course he would relate to someone taking the opportunity to save theirs even if they shouldn't because it's dumb yeah put this episode earlier and make it like the beginnings of their really growing closer rather than like having us assume that they've already grown really close mm -hmm. yeah just make this more of a stepping point for their growing relationship because i can understand if the writers as they're writing it think that's what it is as they're writing this episode they think it is this is them slowly becoming more of like soulmates that's not how it plays i don't think i think it would work better early on i actually believe that he would leave rose behind because you know she's brand new and don't know her very well because like i said i was sort of thinking that so i think it's early enough that you could consider that in a fit of anger he might do that but really i think this is just a matter of like their relationship is not what this episode is about it's about her relationship with pete and so some of the more questionable things about like how the doctor reacts to her we're not supposed to think too hard about it because he's really not the main character and arguably even a main character this episode the couple who are getting married whose marriage they're the reason they're at the church and I feel like I should have some more to say about them because, like, their relationship is arguably meant to, like, be a foil to Pete and Jackie's relationship. And the fact that this guy has issues with his dad might be saying something about fathers and stuff. But I don't think there's enough of that side of the story that I even care about those guys. No, it's like they wanted to do something with it, but they didn't have the time. Like, it feels like, yeah, like they didn't have the time. I think this might be a case of, yeah, we really just didn't have the time. Because I argued with the last episode with Dalek that it wasn't that we didn't have time. It's that we used the time we had poorly. Here, I think they put this couple into this episode... Because that's why you would set this during another wedding, right? That's why you make that decision. So that you can contrast a very unhappily married couple with a really happy pair of newlyweds. And that's why you give the guy daddy issues. Because the episode is called Father's Day and it's about a main character's relationship with their father. And you put those things in this episode to make a point, but I don't think they ever make that point. I guess to end off, do you want to talk about the Reapers themselves? Because we haven't really gone into them as a concept and as a design just in and of themselves. Well, I personally just 
don't like them. I just, the idea of a creature that will pop up and try to set things right, kind of like that thing in the flash. It's like the Langoliers. It's a Stephen King story. But Remember those things? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they work differently because the Langoliers just eat up the past. Like, their job is just to clean up the past at all times. For 2005, the effects aren't terrible on a TV budget. They look decent enough. Like, they look rendered well. But just this design of, like, giant bat things. Like, I mean, it's very this show. Like, if you're gonna get featureless creature on this show, you want it to be something really out there, like a giant bat or a giant fish or something. This comes off a little generic. It's mainly because of how gray they are. Like, they're just big gray bats with, like, mouths on their stomach, I think. Yeah. And they glow sometimes. I just don't buy the concept that a creature will appear, the timeline disrupted in any way. I just don't buy that. Yeah. You could make the argument maybe if they ever wanted to use these guys again, they could say there are different types of paradoxes and a very particular type of paradox is what will bring these guys But I don't know. They're a decent idea just for an external threat where it's okay to have them here when they're not the point of the episode. If the point of the episode was dealing with whatever the ramifications of the paradox were, like physically, then you'd want it to be something more interesting than just giant bat monsters. Because if not, why don't you just go to a planet with giant bat monsters and get stuck there or something? But here, the point is the drama between Rose and Pete. They're just there to be a thing in the background for the audience to be scared of. I think it would just work better if, you know, the universe was just falling apart. I mean, you could do that, but... eh, Stupid moment where uh, Pete gives little Rose to old Rose and Rose does not make any move to stop him. Yeah. Maybe that's a TV time thing, where so that the audience knows what's about to happen, you, like, play a moment that's one second as if it were 20 seconds or five seconds, where it's, like, maybe in the universe of the show, Rose didn't have enough time to react. It only seems like it does because we need to make things clear to the viewer. You didn't have to do that. Like, the way it is, it just looks like Rose is stupid. It can be so easily fixed by just shortening the amount of time. And yet they try to dwell on something, and then it just makes the person look stupid. I gotta wonder how much more we would have to say if Edward were here. Going into this episode for this podcast, I was expecting to have more to say about it than I did. Mm -hmm. Side of the really cool, like, what we have to say about Pete and leaving it up to the audience interpretation, that was a really cool little thing. There's just not much about this episode that I have to talk about. Really, the only thing I had to talk about was the Reapers in the relationship. And that's pretty much all there is to it. So, uh, final thoughts, rating? I guess final thoughts is that it was a really good episode. I liked watching it a lot. It's just sitting down and watching it is really a good experience. With the reputation this episode has, I feel like I should have more to think about with it than I do. I guess for me, it's a decent episode. All the emotional stuff holds up very well, but the story surrounding it with Reapers kind of brings it down for me. 